Hello Cherries fans and welcome to the second look here on Back of the Net. Whether you're watching on YouTube or you're listening via the audio pod, thank you for joining us. We truly appreciate it. My name's Sam Davis. My name's Tom Jordan. And it's been a difficult weekend being a Bournemouth fan. But look, we've been overwhelmed with some of the lovely comments to our match day vlog, which has garnered over 50,000 views. And there are some Arsenal fans all over the world that are revelling in the joy and ecstasy of seeing a last minute winner with the last kick of the game at the Emirates. However, I've got to say, fair play, you've been very humble and gracious in victory with some of the comments and you can sort of understand it from our point of view and they, they're they very sympathetic with the heartbreak that we felt, mate. And yeah. that, that was agony, wasn't it? It really was. Yeah, it's a horrible way to lose a football match. Um, we should be used to it, <laughs> yeah. really, but it was literally the last kick, as you say, mate. Um, so, yeah, horrible, but, um, you know, we'll dive into it. But with the domination also had in the game, I suppose, it... Um, it shouldn't be too much of a surprise. It's just the way it, the way it happened for us is a is a real blow. Um, it would have been such a massive point or three points, obviously. Um, so yeah, we, we were gutted. You saw that, as you say, vlog fan cams. There was, we were. Oh, I mean, I was definitely feeling a bit salty after because I was I was so angry. But um, yeah, as you say, mate, they've been um, they've been really great and humble, and of course they're going to be absolutely buzzing because yeah, that could you know they, that could be a game that they look back on. What was it like twelve games to go, and they go, do you remember that Bournemouth game? Yeah. Like you know, if they win the league by a few points, they'll be going, you know, that was massive. So I totally appreciate them celebrating like they did. And as you may have seen on the preview, Arsenal fans, if you watched it, we do have what's called an away day show, an away day review show that that doesn't take into account the football match, but just rates the whole away day experience at the Emirates and North London on a tier list. That video is going to be coming out later this week. So there's a reason to subscribe. And it's fair to say that the atmosphere has improved at the Emirates, but what was it like during the 90 minutes? We know at full time it was pretty raucous, but throughout we'll give you our honest views. They're very candid and also, of course, we'll go through the pre-match atmosphere, the stadium, the view, the concourse, all that good stuff as well. So yeah, why not give this video a like, but also subscribe to be notified as to when that one is out. Now, this one I think is a difficult one to work out emotionally, mate, mm. because even even two days afterwards, usually my feelings have settled down a little bit, but we've asked for the help of people on Twitter to basically maybe ask us questions and provide some thought-provoking comments because it's a performance that I think should give us a bit of optimism, but at the same time, I also feel more negative yeah. as a result of it as well. No one expected us to be 2-0 up at the Emirates, but we were, and then conceding from being two goals up and losing the game. Well, we've done that before. We've got record this season. We have. So it's uh, completely, as you say, mate, it's very difficult. I think you'll see that with what fans are saying. It's very split because there are positives, but there's also reoccurring themes that are a real concern. Um, and we're so desperate for points at the moment. So, yeah, it's it depends which way you look at it. But um, I think the game as a whole, it was always going to be difficult. They're always going to have the ball. They're always going to have more chances. And we felt they were always going to win. Yeah. So you look at it like that and go, well, you know, with very little of the ball and very little chances, we've got to cut the goals. Mm. So there, there's loads of things that we can look at and take uh, positives from. But, yeah, the overriding kind of feeling at the moment is just is just real frustration and real... I know it's not the case, but I've said to a few people, it feels like a Sally Bournemouth that I could happen to. I mean, that's not true, because yeah, yeah. every club probably says that. But for me, it's just like, of course. If they have one corner left and they score, and I went, yeah, of course. Of course they've scored. Of course they have. And it it's... Almost, yeah, it, it felt a bit written. But um, it wasn't... Oh, I don't know. I'm thinking of the Leeds and the Tottenham game, and I think there was... We were part of our own downfall a bit more than them two, mm. actually. Yeah, I and agree. I think this one was probably more... Arsenal's quality mm. winning them the game whereas in them two I felt it was more our own downfall yeah. that, that caused us losing them so we'll get the bad news out of the way this is the current league table as you can see it was a good weekend for Arsenal maintaining their gap of course they wanted Newcastle to do something for them at the Etihad against Manchester City didn't happen though but they've retained their five-point gap, 12 games to go. But look, let's, let's have a look down the table. 
and we can see that Bournemouth are now propping up the table. I don't think we've been bottom all season, have we? This is the first no, time. No, it's, it's obviously, I think it's extra. It hurts more because it's Southampton that obviously went above mm. us. But um, but really, I think if you put it into perspective, they, they beat Leicester. Mm. We wanted to keep... If Leicester had won, we'd be second from bottom. But Leicester would be away. And we're still close. So, it's very still congested down there. So if we're look, what, Palace down, isn't it? It's, mm. you know, there's quite a lot of teams still in it. Um for sure, uh, definitely some teams in it, but um, yeah, just it's always always horrible when you're when you're the team right at the bottom, and um, yeah, maybe in the next <coughs> press conference we should ask Gary again um, if he knows who's above us because he just needs to say every single team, every single team. Yeah, that's right. I can believe that quote. So uh, the baseline tracker table, of course, it has us down there as well, Saints on minus six with us as well, minus five for Everton. And there you can see Brentford, Brighton, Newcastle still still doing well. Of course, Newcastle to some extent are maybe part of a big seven now, you could say. But we need to start picking up points. If we had got something, that would have been one less. And then it would have been three less had we held on to the win. We'd be on minus three. But there we are on minus six. But Tom, you know what? Let's bring in some optimism. Liverpool have been so topsy-turvy lately and we've got them next at home, mate. And they've been struggling to score goals. Did you um, watch any games yesterday? No, <clears> I didn't. No, what was the... Yeah, because they played Man United. Man United yeah, are top, really good. Oh, they're on fire at the moment. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, um, 7-0. What? 7-0 Liverpool. So, um, <laughs> good time to play them. Uh, Remember when they were on a bad run, we lost 9 nil. So it's now they're on a good run. I'm a little bit concerned. You know, sometimes when, when you get relegated, when we got relegated, and also when you get promoted, these little things happen. And when they happen, you think, you know, that could be one of the things that's a reason why we're getting promoted, why we're getting relegated. It, and I think Liverpool turning their form around in it's... one match against a team that's so on fire, like Man United, who've just won a domestic trophy, netting seven past them. Oh, no. Cause for concern or what? I mean, I mean, we're all looking at that match thinking, we might be able to get something from that. Now I'm thinking, no chance. You can't, you can't write it, really. I think uh, <laughs> Liverpool win 7-0. Of course, they're playing us next. Man, you lose 7-0. They've got Southampton next. Yeah, of course, yeah. It's, yeah, it feels like it was just typical. But as I said, mate, we, we when they were on a bad run, we lost 9-0. So, you know, maybe this is a better thing, I don't know. But, um, yeah, it was one of them games, wasn't it? Really weird one. Did not expect that. But, um, no, the team's got points off them. Never know. They are a lot better at Anfield, by the way. They're, I think away from home, they've only got like three or four more points than us on yeah, the road. They're, okay. they're not be good on the road. So. Oh, you made me feel better with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. I would good. be interested, though. I think I saw someone on Twitter say it. I'd love someone in the comments to, to let me know if you know this fact. What's the worst aggregate score ever? Because we've lost 9 0 to Liverpool. You know, over the two get home and away. What's the worst ever? There can't be, do you know what I mean? We've got to be in for that, I would have thought. Bloody like, hell. if we lose 3 or 4 0, surely that's the worst. Oh, yeah. It's got to be, isn't it? Anyway, oh. positives. Yeah, anyway, on to the positives. Well, look, firstly, we'll check out the um, XG table. If you haven't checked out the other 14, go follow them on Twitter at the moment. And you can see that we're bottom in terms of the expected goals, which we. Which doesn't bode particularly well, but also in the other charts, as you can see on screen, progressive yards carried, we're not even in there, and also progressive passes as well. So <laughs> we, we're struggling at the moment, and we were struggling when we saw the team lineup come out at two o'clock. We were having a couple of beers at the faltering fullback in Finsbury Park, and little murmurings were happening on Twitter about which players might be omitted. And then those fears were confirmed and we saw that both Lerma and Traore were not in the squad, which yeah. um, was a concern. Yeah, a real worry. I think the only only slight positive was Lewis back in the squad, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, just to know that he's not, you know, he's, he's now back and, and available, but obviously he went with Rothwell. Um, I, I guess Lewis wouldn't have been ready to start the game. So it, we've all mentioned kind of obviously letting Pearson go and stuff. It, it meant that we probably had to go with two in the middle. We didn't really have many options. Um, obviously stuck with the the back five, which I expected us to, not like one or two. I think I was a little bit surprised that Semenyo come in instead of Anthony yeah. uh, for Traore, actually. But um, they started kind of as I expected. It was just Vieira, wasn't it? Um, come in for Xhaka, so they rotated a little bit. Obviously Tommy Asu as well at right back. He's done that before. Um, but yeah, it, I don't know. Listen, the, the game obviously was the game, but it, I just look at it and go, they haven't got a striker. Also, haven't got a striker in that whole. Not even forget the start eleven. They haven't got one on the bench. 
So they're playing like a kind of false nine, if you like. It's the you know the term that a lot of people use in Trossard. And we've got three centre halves, and they haven't got anyone up there to mark. So mm. I, it always concerns me a little bit. And I think the way the game went showed that they were always going to have all the ball and pick up little pockets. But um, it was up to our centre halves to just get on the end of everything and block everything, which they mm. they did do pretty well for large parts. To be fair to them, but. Yeah, I was concerned seeing the lineup, but I wouldn't be concerned with any lineup because Arsenal are pretty formidable at the moment. One of the things I really wish we um, would do more often is have fast starts, and I, I feel it's really frustrating where sometimes we just soak it up for. Oh, we scored! <laughs> Mental, wasn't it? What? Yeah, crazy. That was absolutely crazy. We were just taking our seats and just absorbing the atmosphere, and the first part of the game, you're not really concentrating, <laughs> and all of a sudden, I kind of looked over and said, "What? Sorry, am I?" Uh... Do not scratch your eyes. Um, let's let's talk about this goal then. Phil Bill opened the scoring then, early doors. Was it a set piece? Looks like it might have been. Yeah, there was obviously some sort of um, plan there because we, we loaded one side uh, and went down the other. It wasn't like, but it didn't work to perfection. I think there was a lot of luck with it, wasn't there? Because obviously the ball, you know, like you say, we did load the left side. And then who was it that ran across and then spread out with a nice curl pass to Watara? Yeah, it was out to Watara. Was it Dom? I can't remember. No, that was Rothwell. Was it? Was uh, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Rothwell, actually. But yeah, Watara down that right hand side. It was Paul Merson said, Ooh, Watara. Um, Ooh, Watara. Ran, ran down that right hand side. And, and yeah, it, was, it wasn't like the, the Fulham one we had last season. That was planned to perfection. Well, that was just an executed plan. This was just kind of, I think it was probably, if you get a kick off, try and surprise them a little bit, load that side, get down the, get down the other side and get a ball in the box, never know. 9.11 um, seconds. Crazy. But I mean, from their point of view, I think Gabriel and Zinchenko got to do better on that left side and they should clear it. It's not, but Billy makes a good off the ball run and, and he's there. So, um, yeah, couldn't believe it. Um, it was crazy. And I thought, well, at least we could celebrate something. It was, um, yeah, no, good fun. And um, as you said, mate, I think, when, you, when you're playing this five and when you just sit back and let the other team have the ball, which we do virtually every game, um, my f- fear is always if they score first, mm. then what do you do? Um, so getting the first goal was really good because then you've got something to hold on to. What is it about the South Coast and Premier League records? I mean, yeah. heaviest defeats? Yeah, true, yeah. Bournemouth Southampton, nine nils. Uh, fastest Premier League hat-trick? Oh yeah, Marley, and then we had the Football League one yeah. with James Ater. And then fastest goals? Shane Long. Was that 7.69 yeah, right, yeah. seconds or something? He's born with two dollars, though, Shane Long. <laughs> yeah, uh, of course. Um, but yeah, yeah, weird. It is weird that there's a, that correlation there. Even when we bloody get that goal, it's still... I just looked straight away, did that beat Shane Long's? No, it didn't. Um, no, nah, it's class. But worst time to score. <laughs> worst time to score. <laughs> yeah, when you've got 90 plus minutes ahead of you. That's terrible. No, I know what you mean. Um, it kind of uh, didn't remind me. But you know, like, just because I'm just thinking, obviously, the other team I support is England. And do you remember that Euros final against Italy where we scored early? Yeah. You think, oh, was like, that the worst thing early. that could have happened? Yeah, because sure, then we're yeah. just hanging on to it. But what I will say is we would have been that defensive and let them have the ball anyway. Yeah, yeah. So to have a goal was, was brilliant. It wasn't like we changed the game plan because we scored so early, was yeah. it? Let's be honest. Um, we never have any of the ball. So. Yeah. so let's check out the chronological match timeline. This is how it went. We all know how it went. Yeah, one minute. But of course, we all know it was nine seconds. And... Yeah, they made a couple of changes there, but you, you know you can see the dynamic of the game on screen if you're if you're watching on YouTube and look, flick to the other end of the timeline, and you've got the late winner, which of course we're going to come on to. I think someone said Gary Lineker was it saying it was the longest gap between goals, goals, an opening goal. And then an ending goal. I mean, it was Got basically the last kick of the game, wasn't it? Yeah, well, it's, yeah, it's like, well, like I say, it's seconds into the game and then, you know, well over what uh, the normal game is. So, how yeah. Do, how do you reckon that, um, do you think it, it changed Arteta's, like, way of thinking when we're taking the lead early doors or not? It's no. Just a, no, it no I don't really. think so. It, it, it happens so early. Yeah, it happens and, and they would have been hoping they can get a few goals um, at home to Bournemouth anyway. So, I think they just, yeah, they keep going as they will. It would have been frustrating for them, but... Um, yeah, I don't think it changes anything really. I don't think it did, to be honest. I think the only thing that changed was that like early injury to Trossard. Yeah. Uh, Mean and Smith Rowe come on and Martinelli had to go through the middle and for them they probably thought, God, one time we haven't got a striker and the one that's playing there gets injured. So um, I thought that might help us a little bit. Because I think actually think that first twenty minutes Trossard was really, really good. 
Um, so that was probably a plus for us. But um, apart from from that early injury, I think they 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 would have kept calm. I think Arteta and the players thinking mm. we're going to get chances. Yeah, I think so. And uh, um, in terms of that first goal, mm. it tells from the South End on Twitter. He said, "For all the Gary O'Neill bashers out there, I haven't read one comment that actually gives him credit for the open goal." Obviously, he admitted it in his post match interview that it was a planned routine. He very much played it down. Obviously, very still you know, still disappointed. Once you've got an agenda, it's hard to see the positives, but I saw promising signs for the rest of the season and still reckon that we will stay up. And we, we definitely had a tactic in that first half. Soak, 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 and hit him on the counter. And, yeah. you know, I was saying to you just off air just then, like the players that we've signed in January are conducive to fast transitions. And Absolutely. we certainly did that at times. And I mean, one of the breaks where Dom... <laughs> Uh, you know, good good bur- burst of pace to set through Billing, and he, he did he really did well, but fell to Atara, and he should have probably done better with that. Ramsdale did well to come yeah. out and smother it, but I was looking at that, not really seeing what happened. We feel quite far away. At one point, I thought, has it hit the bar? What's happened? And I honestly was expecting the net to ripple. Yeah, I think it's one of, it's it's one of them where you go from our point of view, we've got to be scoring that. You've got, you've got to finish that chance. You're going to get a very limited amount of chances. Um, in this type of game and you've got to take that it was a hell of an opportunity but from their perspective what a massive save from Aaron Ramsdale Huge. and I think there is a case where Watara should do better but Ramsdale does brilliantly it's not one or the other I think it's a bit of both um, and you, you mentioned it to me and it's a, a fair point that I think Dom and Watara almost get in each other's way a little bit if one of them's not there you wonder if it would because Dom if uh, I think I think you said it to me off there mate that if if Dom's a little bit further back, then Watara can almost just pass it straight to him and he's got an open goal. Easy, yeah. I don't um, think Dom knew that he was there. No, and, and equally, if Watara isn't there, can Dom get to it yeah. in a better angle? I'm not sure, but regardless, Watara's just coming onto it and he's maybe he's got to lift it a little bit more. Just, yeah, it's, just it's a different one. It's lifting. a split second and uh, he's got with it first time. So, But yeah, that was a, that was a real chance. But it's a positive that, that in transitions and on the counter-attack that we could have that threat because, as you say, we've got players that should be able to hurt teams on the break. We've got a lot of pace. But frustrating though, mate. I, one thing I, you know, that we rarely did that in in the first half. Like we rarely got forward. And you, I check out the average positions and oh my God, it's unbelievable. So you've got Arsenal with nearly every player. In fact, it has got every player apart from Aaron Ramsdale. He's not even in, in his penalty box. He's basically halfway up his half. But like even when we got beat 9-0 by Liverpool, like Alisson was in his box. Yeah, Ramsdale's yeah. basically near half. the centre circle. And everyone's in our half. Contrast that with what we got, and everyone is in our own half. Maybe uh, Ryan Christie's like one of the hairs on his yeah. right knee. He's got a big toe, eh? <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, no, I, think, I think Ramsdale was further away from his goal in average position than our centre arse were mm. from our goal. Do you know what yeah. I mean? He was, uh, yeah, the average but positions were a joke. This sort of, you know, soaking it up, it's, oh, it's so... It's so frustrating because we we were just inviting on. But that said, apart from one double save from Neto, he actually wasn't no, tested we, that much. Like our defence was really good and did deserve a lot of credit. I think. Yeah, I think you've got to say the the three centre halves were were blocking everything, getting headers on everything. We were and Stephen, yes, yeah. yes, I thought they were excellent. Forcing them wide and and just blocking everything. But it's it's a really difficult one, mate. Because if you go toe to toe with Arsenal, we're gonna get battered. Yeah. So you've got to soak it up. They're going to have a lot of possession. I mean, it was outrageous how much they had. Mm. But they're they're going to have all the ball. So you can't expect us to just go toe-to-toe. That would be very naive. So you've got to soak it up and look for counter-attacks. That makes sense. Having said that, I think if you're going to do that all the time, because, listen, this isn't a one-off. Every time we play, we beat Wolves. Yeah. And that was our, our only win since November. And in that game, they had all the ball. Yeah. We always let the other team have the ball. And you normally think, okay, a team's doing that because one, they feel they've got a counter-attacking threat. Tick. We do have a counter-attacking threat. But two, because they're bloody solid and hard to break down. We're the worst defence in the league. Yeah. So you give up that many chances and you allow Arsenal to have that much control of the game. You're, you're going to lose. Surely you're going to lose. And obviously what? it went to the wire, but we did lose. What about the games that we, we have? Like, for instance, I don't know if you know these stats off the top of your head. I don't expect you to. But like, if we, when we played Everton... And beat them 3-0. They had more possession. Really? They did have more possession, yeah. It's it's not a... Yeah, we won 3-0 and so they, had, they had more possession in the game. When was the last time we had more possession? Do you know? Off the top? Yeah, because I looked, didn't I? I? I did have a quick look and um, it was when we lost the Palace 2-0. It's um, a weird one. I think the games where we've probably... So could you say that Gary O'Neill tactically has got that right then? What I'll say is when we get the first goal against teams that you could argue in and around us, a Palace, Southampton, them sort of teams, we've let in the first goal, haven't we? 
and we're at home. Yes, yeah. So then their tactic change, which I think means we have the ball because they yeah. then sit back. That's right. that's all it is in my opinion. Um, but we're trying to play on the on the counter attack all the time, and like I say, it, it, obviously it can work. We've got players that can do that now, um, and we'll see. But my my concern is that teams won't play obviously because they're not going to have the quality. So teams won't play like our previous couple of of opposition. So yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. But we're we're a team that are not gonna. I mean. I would find it difficult to think, will we have more possession than the opposition for the rest of the season? Probably not. No. I'd be surprised. But that doesn't mean that we're going to go down because and of it. And it's, it's not, a... you know, being a Bournemouth fan, like, maybe it's an entitled thing, but we've always, previously under Eddie, I know we always talk about him, you know, we always dominated the ball. Yeah. And so we're now going to games expecting us to, like, see us touch the ball for, like, a third of the time of the opposition. And it's a... Uh, it's a shame because we've got players of good technical quality, but then I watch games like that and you think, well, have they got technical quality? Because the amount of times we were just, okay, 5 4 1, right? I thought Dom should always be the outlet, but quite often we were just hoofing it up the pitch and just giving it straight back to yeah. Arsenal. Whereas Panic. Dom, you know, Dom, he didn't have any help. He did, he did work really hard. We'll have a conversation about Dom a little bit later on, I'm absolutely certain. But I don't know, sometimes they just make stupid technical mistakes, like little passes to feet not working and stuff. Yeah. Like, they are professional footballers here. <laughs> Yeah, they I just know. seem to like it's almost a mentality thing yeah I do think we, we, we panic a little bit um, for sure and there's there's no because we're playing that counter attack and then we've because we've got so little of the ball when we get it there's no real options and everyone's dead on their feet and we just go along the dom and I, I do feel for him but um, yeah it's listen the, the, the worrying thing for me is I'm a completely different team and, and who knows what happens but the one time I felt you just mentioned Eddie's team's always having the ball the one time I felt we went away from that a little bit was when Eddie tried to go a little bit more counter attack and we got relegated um, but Having said that, the calibre of player we've got in this squad is set up to be counter-attack. So I do understand do you think, it. Do you think almost he's trying to adopt a Leicester City style when they won the Premier League? Because no, they, they, like, that, like they, were, they were very counter-attacking. They, they were, but they, they could defend properly. And I, I, I do worry that I don't, I don't think... As I say, I thought the through centre half's done okay, but we always look like we could, could see goals. We could see so many chances. It, the, it's, it's there in black and white. We concede the most goals in the league. So our defence is not going to keep us up. So we can't allow teams to have this many opportunities in games. Are we, um, are we going to... You know, the, the five at the back conversation that we've had before. At Man City, obviously, you know, why don't we, why don't we play to our strengths? If we had that five at the back conversation after 60 minutes at Arsenal, we haven't talked about the Senesi goal, but we will very shortly. Um <laughs> You could say, actually, Gary Neal's right for playing five at the back. I would disagree. Um, I would disagree because it's only because they weren't finishing chances. They had all the ball. They were picking up the ball in midfield all the time because they overloaded us. How many shots did you say they had? 30, 31, something like that. Um, So they had... And what about the Liverpool game? Yeah, they had nearly double the amount of chances to when we lost (laughs) 9-0. They had nearly double the amount of chances. They had a lot more possession. So you can't tell me that that... Obviously, if we if we win the game, you go, you know, you can't argue with it. We've won the game. Who cares? But um, yeah, but the fact, do, fact of the matter is, they didn't finish their chance. The only reason they had thirty one shots. Do we just create reasons though? Are we just creating reasons to be anti Gary O'Neill or pro Gary O'Neill based on what happens after? The power of hindsight, of course. But you can only go off that. What we're we supposed to do? No. You can only go off facts, and the facts and facts of the matter are, he's managed, he's managed a team three times who have been two two goals ahead, and we've lost every single one of them. Um, that's it. That's not a, a you know one of them things anymore. When you've done it three times that you've led and not even got a point out of any of them, that is a concern. That is a concern. And, and when we go into the game, mate, we'll probably you'll probably would have would have asked me anyway. But when you go, so we well, obviously we go two nil up, which we'll talk about. They bring it back two one. As soon as they make it two one, we make a double change. Yeah. As soon as panic, then they make it two two. We make a change. Yeah. It just screams of panic to me. Um, but listen, it wasn't. I didn't feel like it was uh, all Gary Neal's decisions that lost us that football match. Of course it wasn't. It was the fact that Arsenal were a lot bloody better than us. Mm. Um, but we're not. I, I don't feel like we're trying to find what I was absolutely gutted for him and gutted for Gary O'Neill and gutted for the players. But the fact of the matter is, that's three times. And we're just going on. The, we have conceded the most goals in the league. We are the worst team in the league at the moment. Mm. What, are we, what are we supposed to say? But um, yeah, uh, it was... We went down to the wire, mate, but it, you look at it in black and white, it's, I mean, they would have been absolutely 
dev- it would have looked like a robbery if we hadn't have lost that game. Really, when you mm. look at the stats, it's outrageous. When you, it's all about the you know like the context of uh, of the game because if you, if you'd have said oh yeah you know Tom if I'd have said to you five minutes before kickoff we're actually going to be losing three two today you'd be like oh, yeah, that's all right yeah but, but it's all the context of the way it happens yes because if you and say to me we're two 0 up with half hour to go would you take three two of course I wouldn't yeah exa- yeah exactly and you're also playing Arsenal as well mm. and you, you know the caliber of the team I mean Arsenal I thought um, I think most of their fans will probably say they were slightly under par in some ways. However, in other ways, you could say that they dominated the ball. We were one of these teams that parked the bus, and I'm sure their fans on the on AFTV fan cams and stuff would have been very frustrated, but they found out a way mm. to, uh, to get past us, even though it took them the, to the last kick of the game. But I'll tell you what, though, 1-0 became 2-0 in the second half, yeah. mate, and um, we earned a, a free kick that was um, a really good delivery, actually, which then produced a corner, which Joe Rothwell went, to take o- uh, went over to take. And what good delivery. Yeah, really good delivery. And you know what? One of the only goals of the season where I could sense it was going in before Senesi made made contact. I mean, like the run. Yeah, you just you it was see just, a mile off. And I don't know, like aesthetically, I love that. I love yeah. it where a player curves his run, gets a really good head on it, really powerful head, peels off Straight towards the away, the away fans. Yeah, lovely, Absolute superb. Absolute limbs in <sighs> the away Damn. end. And, and at that point, Hmm. Am, I, am I starting to believe that was the, fir- know, the first time in the game where I thought we, we'd get something here because yeah. I think at 1-0 at half time I was loving it and thinking you know this is, this is, I didn't expect this but I think Arsenal were still favourites to win that game and I thought they'd probably still have too much mm. but I was pleased with with obviously the result at half time but when we got the second I suddenly thought oh hang on yeah. hang on because they've got to get three now yeah. you know I'm thinking even a point so yeah, it was a it was a big moment, a really good goal, um, re- really well worked set piece, which was nice to see because I think people like Senesi uh, are, are good in the air, and we, and we need if you're a team at the bottom, you've got to score some goals from set pieces. You, you're not going to have much of the ball, as we keep saying. So set pieces are going to be key, um, and we're not very good at defending them. So let's make sure we can attack them a little bit better. And it was a good good ball because we we've, we've struggled with players actually putting yeah. in a decent cross and Traore recently, and now Rothwell show that they can put a decent ball in the box. And when they whip the ball in with that amount of power, it doesn't take much, doesn't take many yeah. um, much in terms of. Net- muscles to, to, yeah. to generate your own power just need to direct it redirect it and that's what he did and looking at the um the shots chalkboard from who scored so after that goal there we are we're in blue there with three three chances and two of them were goals mm. one of them was Watara um but look Arsenal absolutely peppered us at full time though we, we added one, one more I think that was Dom's yeah. Charts from an angle, but I mean, look at that. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> crazy. By the way, it? comparing to the 9 0 at Liverpool, we had five shots against Liverpool. Yeah. It's right. crazy, isn't it? It is crazy. Ugh. Sammy tweeted and said, as a game in isolation, it, it's not horrific. In the context of our league position and the history of being two goals up, it's pathetic. You can't let a team like that have 80% possession yeah. and expect to come away with anything. So, with that in mind, 2 0, did you have Leeds in the back of your head? Did you have Spurs in the back of your head? Or. Were you just riding the crest of a wave and just yeah. hoping at that point in time? Yeah, I can't, I can't say, I can't pretend that I was thinking about them. I was kind of just, yeah, just enjoying it and mm. you know, seeing what happens. Like my, my concern come when they got the one because I always think that you just got to keep it a 2-0 for as long as possible. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, I agree with, with Sammy there to an extent. It's, I play six to side with you sometimes, mate. If we had three games in like over a season we kept throwing away two goal leads at six aside I'm going there's something all right do you know what I mean though that's it doesn't matter what level you're yeah. at you can't keep doing that so I think that's that's kind of a good generalization of the fact that in isolation it's we didn't expect to win the game it's not too bad but it's when you look at over the course of a season to throw away another two goal lead as you mentioned there mate goals going at different times and you know you get off of that before the game then then you're going to be okay but it was the, the way it happened wasn't it? so Arsenal fans were um were quiet and down, I would say, mm. at that point in time. But they were certainly more enthusiastic after seeing their team score a couple of goals relatively quickly. Yeah. Uh, one of them was uh, was Partey at the at the far post. Uh, Neto got his knee on it, and I, I thought at one stage it saved, but it went in the side netting goal. His, his punch should be better. Mm. Um, Agreed, that, in my opinion. Um, I don't think he don't clear the first one away well enough mm. um, for me. So yeah, I think he should get a better punch on that. But yeah, good finish for them. And weirdly, you almost think I would have taken away both of the goals, so I would rather have just stayed one nil. Yeah. Because when you go two 0 and then they score, it lifts them. Whereas yeah. if it had stayed one nil, you know what yeah. I mean. So it was really frustrating that I think we only held on for about five minutes. And then Ben White scoring as it well. Uh, it looked like Neto saved, but the watch went off. Um, a defensive mistake again? 
Yeah, got caught on that side. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about this in context. So there was a change that was made. Yeah, like I say, straight after they scored to make it 2-1. W- was Jay-Z injured? Well, well, I haven't heard he's injured. Um, hopefully he's not, but um, that would have been the only reason. That would have I mean, there were some people that, was, that were saying that... Did Frederick play? Has he, did he play left? He has played left back before. I don't know if he's done it really for us. He has played left back in the past. Um, and there were a few people saying, well, you know... Zamora's not the best defensive. He's bringing a bit of experience. It's not that bad. Would you maybe switch or like put Smith over there? Yeah, uh, maybe. I guess you don't want to change too much in no. game, but I don't know. I just felt I Jay Z was dealing well with Saka, by the way. Yeah, well, people. There were some people saying that Jay Z wasn't having the best game. Except I was going. He's playing against probably the the best right winger in Europe at the moment, mm. and he hadn't done anything. No, yeah, not really. Not had really. A, a bit of the ball, but it was quite him down. Yeah, so I, I don't. I didn't really. I, and you're saying he's bringing off Fredericks for his experience. Well, he didn't show much experience for the equaliser, did he? And I, mm. I didn't think... I mean, I don't actually rate him that much anyway. But, yeah, it was, a, it was a, I didn't really understand that one. It was a double change. Who else to be? Oh, and he bought Anthony on for Semenyo, yeah. which made a bit more sense, I guess, just for some legs up the pitch. But, um, yeah, for a straight goal to concede, as you said, I, I thought from where we are at the other end that it was a, a bloody decent save from Neto. But I don't, I don't want to criticise Neto for that one, but someone made a point to me. I thought it was a fair point. Remember the Brighton goal, Matoma's header? Both the goals, he's trying to get them out. It's almost like he's standing behind yeah, his legs. Yeah, he's a bit weird. I don't know. I, I don't, wouldn't know enough uh, from a keeper's perspective um, to, to know if he was, yeah, not in the best position there. But yeah, it was obviously... Uh, ben White did change the game, by the way. When he came on at half-time, yeah. he, he changed the game for a big time. And Saka was better when Ben White was there. Um, yeah, he was very, very good. And it was his first goal for the club. So I think they've, I think every single player in their squad now has scored for Arsenal, yeah. um, which is an outrageous. So thing. Frederick's got maybe caught a little bit napping there. Yeah. And, uh, Paul Kenwood's alluded to this in his tweet that he put in today, actually, saying, still disappointed and angry. Two of their three goals were defensive mistakes. Can't keep making errors at the back. He also talks about uh, Dongo's chance in the first half as well. Um, now, in amongst Arsenal's, you know, first goal, second goal, and the third goal, there were a number of shouts, VAR shouts. Mm. Um, yeah, I think we got away with a few. Yeah, it felt like we did. How many were there? Three that went to VR? Two, two or three? But four in the end went it, to VR. Yeah, it could sure. have been. And also, any time that Neto was uh, you know, taking a goal kick, their fans were harassing him. Yeah. I don't actually think he was doing anything wrong. But obviously, with the with the frustration, that of course they're going to boo and of course they're mm. going to jeer as he's taking his time. Rightly so. I think uh, virtually, um, it'd be interesting to look at stats. Virtually every time we've led the game, Neto's got booked. Because mm. so he is known for it a little bit. But he, funnily enough, I don't think he got booked for time wasting. I think it was dissent. Yeah. So he didn't actually get booked for any of his time wasting. But yeah, listen, I think I'm sure Arsenal fans would uh, appreciate that. Of course, we're going to have to do things like that. And yeah. in the end, you got you got got a goal over at a time. So yeah. time wasting didn't work for us, did it? Um, yeah. And well, that's what Paul said as we saw on screen just then. Time wasting is not game management. If it works, it looks good, doesn't it? If yeah. um, for you, um, you got you got you got to get the balance right. And uh, obviously, in the end, we didn't. I, I think in, in in the moment, in the heat of the moment, I was really angry that they'd scored and it was over the... But looking back on the game, yeah, it, well, they, they deserved that. Smith went down during the added time. We were tired. Yeah. The, and I, I do think that probably Arsenal fans won't know this, but we've... I mean, the VAR against us this season has been outrageous. And it was yeah, the yeah. first game that I thought, bloody hell, it's going for us today. Because yeah. it did go for us. It did. I think... Um, I don't agree. I've seen some Arsenal fans and some people say about the Mep and one handball. I don't think that's a handball. Right. Because he's gone for is that where he's dropped onto yeah, his arm? Yeah, he's missed the header and it's just landed on his arm. Where's his arm? He's not, his arm's not out. Mm. I thought that would have been harsh, but I think Senesi, I think, went through the back of Tommy Asso. I thought that was a penalty. Mm. And there was another handball where I thought, well, we've had some handballs go against us that weren't as clear handballs as that. So, yeah, I was a little bit surprised I didn't get, get one of them. Um, so we got away with a few there, but we've we've definitely earned that. <laughs> oh, you know what? And I was I was starting to believe, mate, the more the minutes were ticking on, I remember in the vlog, 86 minutes, 87, and then... 90, I was thinking that, you know, defensively, we seemed to be so resilient. We were chucking our bodies on the line. They had had chances galore. Martinelli firing over the bar. We've seen the shots timeline. We've seen how much they were dominating. The heat maps will confirm that. And then they get a corner in the dying embers. A few Bournemouth fans with their their stopwatches, Hmm. looking at the minutes and stuff. It's a minimum. It's a minimum. And we do know that. But also there was an injury or... Smith, you went some game management yeah. from Adam Smith or whatever that time is going to get added on yeah. so we cannot be complaining about that but corner comes over 
it ends up with Reese Nelson the substitute and on his weak foot out of a strike out of a strike and out of a strike yeah, it's, a, it's a goal worthy win the game I guess yeah you'd like to think oh, oh could someone have blocked it etc etc you're always going to look at that as a team that concede but simple fact is you know young lads come on because of injuries really um, and come on because of yeah lack of numbers for them he's not a player that he's been right down the pecking order probably after the Trossard signing you're thinking Nelson's not going to get a kick the rest of the season he's come on got an assist and a goal uh, fair play to him uh, it was a great strike and I think that was the only thing really I felt for the lads because when you put up that defensive and you're just putting your bodies on the line and then they just hit, a, hit one in the top corner it's off his weak foot and we almost I think we do well to make him have to go to his left when he wanted it on his right it's just one of them things um, so really good strike from him but um, that photo mate that photo at mm. the end I mean Reese Nelson's probably the coolest man there just wheeling away for celebrations but Ben White seems to be giving it to Neto there there are players on on their knees hands on heads Arsenal players down on the He's floor yeah I, it's, it's absolutely crazy. is that going to be a photo that maybe summarises the season when we look back I, I think I mean I tweeted this I think it could be I think it could be the one that is one that Arsenal fans will look back on when they win the title it's one that Bournemouth fans might look back on. Yeah. If I don't want to say when. Yeah, of course. I, you know, I've got my own thoughts as to whether we'll get relegated. They may have leaked onto one of my videos somewhat. Um, however, it could well be. It a could well photo. be. Defined, yeah. yeah. No, I know what you mean. I think more Arsenal will if they if they were to win the league. I think they'll. There's there's been a few lately actually from Arsenal, but that that would they'll look at that and go that is absolutely monumental. Two 0 down and um, it yeah. looks like they gave their all. I mean, look at them. Yeah, that and looks uh, like last I, I think from from our perspective, yes, because of the way the goal went in. But I think if we were to go down this season, um, I think we'll be looking at, at games we should have won with teams. Well, exactly. Yeah. More. So, yeah. but yeah, I know what you mean from a from a picture point of view. That could sum up the season, couldn't it? Um, if what if the team that are in a elated there win the league, and the team that are absolutely down devastated go down. But well, um, one thing that always surprises me when I watch games at the Emirates, obviously there's those guys behind each goal with the massive flags, mm. how quickly those flags are raised when mm. Arsenal score. It's like split second, unbelievable mm. scenes, but it was unbelievable scenes for the Arsenal fans. And there was a, there was a comment on, um, on the YouTube vlog about, you know, I tuned into this video to see the Arsenal limbs, but all I can see is some bald, sad guy's face. It's like, it's, it's a Bournemouth fan channel. And I apologise <laughs> for having to make you What's yeah. that? I mean, you didn't have to, but um, limbs, scenes at the Emirates. I mean, in contrast with a lot of the previous 90 minutes where I think they were relatively quiet, I, I've never seen the Emirates like that. Never no. seen, and a lot of people in the media are also saying that they've never seen scenes like that as well. Yeah, I think during the game, I thought they were okay. I think they, they were a lot, it's still a lot better than um, previous times I've been to the Emirates. No doubt about that. It's definitely improved because normally you can hear a pin drop. So it's definitely improved, but I think because of the way the game was going, it weren't as raucous as it has been this season, but as you say, mate, at the end it was yeah, it was crazy. It was party time, and uh, yeah, after the game, and even I mean, you're talking all the walk by hours and hours after the game when you're in, you know, you're still in London, you can still hear them. Um, and I'm not, I'm not surprised. I mean, people say oh, they only beat Bournemouth at home and all this stuff, you know, other fans, but that's must massive for them in their total charge. So I, I, I understood it, but um, yeah, hard to, hard for us to be on the receiving end of it. Which um, yeah, so where's the title going? I think it's going to be close. I still think it's going to be really, really close. Do you reckon it's going to? Okay. Do you think it's going to go down to the final day? Um, well, I'm not sure. It could do. Could well do. But I think, I think it was. Um, Have Arsenal got to play Man City at the Etihad? At the Etihad, which would be a big game. But Bloody yeah, I think, I think the, the Villa one when they won at Villa when they were behind twice and they managed to win it four two. I mm. thought I started thinking then. You know what? It might be Arsenal. They might nick because I've, I've kind of been saying I think City will just have too much. But I'm starting to sway a little bit now, where I'm almost 50-50, actually. So it's been really, really close. I think that what will help Arsenal is, is Man City in the Champions League um, mm. and trying to do that, whereas Arsenal can rotate and not care as much about the Europa League. Because the Europa League, they'd only want to win that if they're outside the top four, really. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, maybe they've got a slight edge now. Some of the people that we were with and um, a number of Bournemouth fans were, I think maybe a bit of salt was um, helping to produce this uh, yeah. opinion, but they were saying Man City were better than what Arsenal were. No, I disagree. Were, were, were they? No, I disagree. They, they, um, City were a bit more ruthless on the day and better defensively mm. um, because, you know, we score from kickoff and we score a set piece. Um, so, yeah, they, they were probably, they were better defensively. They were a little bit more assured and a little bit more well-oiled machine. Mm. 
But Arsenal are the best footballing team I've, I've seen this season by an absolute mile. Yeah. That's why they had over 80% of the ball. That's why they had over 30 shots. Um, yes, they weren't. You've got to remember, they played that game without a striker. So you put a striker in, uh, mm. the, you know, that game could be a, any scoreline. So yeah, no, nothing against us. I, just, I, just, I do think, and watching football this season, I think Arsenal were the best team to watch by, by a long way. Just City have just got that know-how. And, yeah. and it's going to be which one of that wins over in the end. But it's going to be exciting for the title for sure. I mean, like, Arsenal had 80% <laughs> possession in the game. And Aging Cherry says, you, so, you simply can't give a top six team that amount, no matter how good your defence is. It's great that we're scoring, but we need to keep the ball a lot more. If anything, he suggests, we need a little more Parker ball. I'll ask you about that in a sec, Tom, because I think you've probably got your own opinions <laughs> about Scott Parker. But it seems to be no team at the moment. That's in, like maybe Newcastle are bridging the gap a little bit. But um, it seems that in the Premier League, We've either got a tactic against the big six and then there's everyone else. Yeah, and I think you've got to have that to an extent because if you were playing the same way against, no disrespect, but Forest or Wolves, as you were playing against Arsenal City, mm. that's very naive really because there's a different calibre of player there in both squads. But but you also you want a bit of an identity as well, of course. But is that the best way to is it is it the best way to win matches against big sides though by putting five at the back and not just playing to your strengths like load in the midfield where I mean, you know, their midfield th- three that you were mentioning, I mean, unbelievable quality yeah. against Billing and Rothwell. Yeah. Rothwell that's, you know, had a handful of Premier League appearances. Phil Bill, of course, we know his quality, but... More of an attacking player, though. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I know what you mean. I've, I've always, I think it's personal opinion, I've always um, preferred packing out a midfield against the top teams rather than just putting an extra defender in because they're going to dominate the ball and um, they're going to get runners. And you've got people like Erdegaard, you know, who's just going to pick up the pockets all the time. Um, and he was everywhere. I think he had. I think he had ten shots or something ridiculous. Mm. But um, yeah, it's it's a difficult one. I don't think it's as simple as just chucking in a defender. But you have got to change the way you play a little bit. Um, what I will say though is, uh, I am getting a little bit frustrated with this. Well, you know, three hits gets. We're the only team in the league that hasn't got anything off the big six. The only team. Of Crystal Palace, are they? Yeah, they've got. I saw a stat that they've, every team's got something off the big six. So Apart from Bournemouth, yeah. I'll have a quick look at Palace while we're chatting. Yeah. Um, just because you mentioned it, but I'm sure that's the case. And I don't think we've really. I mean, Chelsea was a prime example because they're in the big six, but not actually going to be there this season mm. by the looks of it. Well, we just didn't even try and lost 2 yeah. 0, and they've been on awful form. Um, so, yeah, I, I get that they're going to be a lot better and we can't be overboard because we're playing teams of far more quality. Yeah. But if you're going to stay in the league, you've got to get something off one of them. Yeah. You've got to. I know um, I'm saying the big six because obviously this is about Newcastle because obviously we've drawn them. Mm. But the, the traditional big six, we, we haven't. We haven't. And, and everyone else will. And I think you've got to over the course of a season. We always have in previous Premier League seasons. So, um, yeah, that's a, they drew a man. You've I've already looked right. straight away. They drew a man you this year. Um, Palace. So, yeah, Palace have done it. Um, but, yeah, it's just... A, that's, that's my concern is we've got to... And it, we can't keep going. It's a free hit. I mean, we're going to run out of games soon when everyone goes, well, yeah, you can't expect them. We've got winnable games coming up. Well, we can't expect to be... Well, everyone else is getting stuff off these teams. Yeah. So we, we've got to... You know, we've got Liverpool at home coming up. They, they've they've dropped so many points to teams in and around us. Uh, we and, can't be the only team not to do it. And you look back at some of the you know, big t- 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 sides that we have played. Chelsea. Yeah. When they, exactly. they've been dreadful. Yeah. They've been dreadful, and we we looked really poor against them. Awful, yeah, awful. Um, yeah, we, could, we just yeah, we've got to we've got we to change mean, our mentality. It'd be funny. Liverpool were everyone thought they were a bit of a joke at the start of the season. How much they've fallen off, and we got beat nine. Um, yeah, and, and I'm not saying we should expect to get stuff of this team, but if everyone around you is managing to find a way to pick up points off the big boys, and we're the only ones that aren't, we will go down. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm yeah, saying. Well, I know everyone says it's all about. I thought I think we will. And and then people and then people always uh, come back and then go, yeah, but it's how you do against the other teams around you. Okay, well we've lost to Southampton, we lost to West Ham. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So yes, we've got to play them again. So let's see. But at the moment, all I can go on is is the facts and the teams that a lot of people are saying to me that we can maybe finish above. are Leeds playing once lost, Southampton playing them once lost, West Ham playing them once lost. So if they're the three teams that... Do you know what I mean? We've, we've got to change something. Glad I chat to you, mate. Um, I'm just trying to... Yeah. And don't get me wrong. There's a long way the season's going. We, hopefully, suddenly, with these new players and the second half of the season, we, we'll, win, we'll win them. Well, look, I'm, but, I'm feeling optimistic. You know, parts of that performance 
filled me with optimism? Did they fill Gary O'Neill with optimism? Asked if there was a moment in the game where Gary O'Neill thought that Bournemouth would win. Afterwards, he told the press, no. <laughs> he referenced also Arsenal's relentlessness going forward and that it was always going to be tough. But he said that there was no moment in the game where he thought Bournemouth would win. Even at 2-0 with like half an hour to go, what? Yeah, I mean, oh, I'm trying to give him the benefit. I'm, I'm hoping that... He's not very good with words. No, he's, he's, I mean, he's absolutely crap. But I'm hoping that it was just misconstrued. And that, I really hope so, and that really, that's dreadful. What he's meaning is, at no point did he think the game was won. Do you know what I mean? Okay, yeah. That, that's what I'm hoping. Okay, okay. That's what well, I'm let's hoping. Hope so. I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. But the, the fact of the matter is, in, in press conferences and interviews, he's absolutely awful. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, we criticised Parker for it, and he's, he's nearly as bad, to be honest with you, which is, a, which is annoying. It is annoying. Um, you know, it's a difficult one, you know, um, and he hasn't really had that experience before because he hasn't been a manager before. So he, he struggles with it, for sure. But um, I get a little bit frustrated, like I was going on then, about the big boy, how much he bigs up. And he's big to, I mean, he was talking about, before the City game, he was talking about like the, world, the world's best team you've ever yeah, seen. Yeah. We lose. And then you play Arsenal, the best team in the world. Oh, they're just unbelievable. And they, they batter everyone at home. You think, oh, OK. And you know for a fact we'll go into this Liverpool game and he'll say how amazing they are. Mm. And it's like, oh, come on. We're just... But I know these teams are good, but you know, give give the boys some, you know, if we if we play, you know, kind of go, you know, if we play to our level, I think we can get something, you know, blah blah. blah. Not, it's just always this kind of where they're so good. Yeah, oh, yeah. Come on, it's a little bit frustrating um, to hear sometimes, but I'm hoping it was misconstrued. But yeah, I'm not a. I, I every time I think oh, I Neil's got an interview, I'm a bit concerned about yeah, what he's yeah. going to say next. To be honest with you. So the man of the match there, you can see the man of the match and uh, the ratings as well. Phil Bill scored really well actually for us with eight point one. Very good. One. I thought, yeah, I thought that was a great game for him. He got forward. He's he's becoming quite a box to box player actually. And he's when he enough. and when he does that, you know, Bournemouth usually play relatively well. Sometimes he has his off his off games. We know that, but I thought mm. he was very good. Phil Bill there. With 8.1 out of 10, would you say that he was your man of the match? Uh, yeah, I'd say Celeste was close behind for me. Um, he obviously got the other goal, but I thought he was he was pretty solid, blocked everything, mm. um, put his head on everything. Um, I thought them two were good. I thought, you know, three centre half did do that relatively well. Um, you know what concerns me? Go on. Right, so we've seen the average positions, right? Mm. The, the heat map against Man City that you're seeing on screen. You know what? It's, oh, it's not bad. You expect that against Man City. Against Arsenal... It's worse. Hmm. What the hell do we do <laughs> when we play Liverpool, who have just won 7-0? Is it just going to be a little thin line of green or, or red in our own penalty box, mate? Because we seem to like, we seem to like to retreat, don't we? It can't be. It was a, a bit of a, a... Liverpool were very, very good against Man United. Yeah, uh, they it, was, were. it was a bit of a, a freak in a way. At half-time, I thought Man were edging the game. They were 1-0 down. They were, but they were edging the game. Mental what happened. And that can happen at Anfield, as we know. You can't be. We can't be doing that at home. Mm. No chance. Liverpool have, have had a bad season. Let's let's be real. They're coming back a little bit for sure, yeah. and they've obviously got quality. But they ain't to the levels of Arsenal and City this season. They mm. don't keep the ball like them two. They are nowhere near as defensively good, and we've scored in both of these games. So, I I, I think if we want to stay up this season, we've got to be looking to get someone at home. We've got to be looking to get yeah, someone at home in the home games. We've got to. Liverpool yeah. are a diff, different beast at Anfield, but yeah, we. I, I don't want to see. Uh, Liverpool shouldn't be having seventy eight percent possession against us right. and, and and thirty chances. So, um, you know, that's not. But I thought that straight away yesterday when you saw the scoreline. I thought, well, there's Gary Neil written in it. Well, you know, they they just won seven 0 It's going to be all defeatist again. Liverpool haven't been that good. Let's not take it off one game. You know, we 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 got to look at this game and be braver and actually believe in ourselves and think we can we can take Liverpool on. They're awful at the back yeah. this season. We can take them on. They could see the free the Wolves. Wolves can't hit a barn door half the time. So, yeah, come on. It was one game. Let's, in a big rivalry for them, you know, let's, let's look to try and hurt Liverpool. That's what I want. I want us to look at their defensive frailties at times and the way they, their fullbacks bomb on and let's try and hurt them. I get, I, I get a sinking ship feeling, though, at the moment with Bournemouth. I just, yeah. feel, I just feel as though, you know, they're just waiting for the inevitable, almost. It's my, my concern, as always, when you lose games like you just lost, is that's going to really hurt them. Um, because they will think we gave everything and we've still lost, and that will, that will, that could really you know take take the wind off ourselves to a degree. But equally, I just hope I, I, this is where I feel like I'd love a I'd love to believe that the the coaches and the and the manager would would be going look what you've just done against Arsenal. Yeah, look yeah. how much to the wire you took them. 
you know, we haven't got to play Arsenal again this season. Mm. You know, come on. Um, these are, you know, we just played the two teams that go for the title. So, you know, believe in yourselves. But um, that's not the murmurings you hear in press conferences, which is annoying. But I just I just hope the the lads think, you know, let's go for a bit, bit of no fear at, at home and try and have a bit of a go, mate, because sitting back and in, in doing us the best of us at the moment. No, it's not. Looking through some of the tweets, AFC League, Matt says, bottom of the league, I've seen better managers sacked for less. How long can this project sustain itself? Surely after four wins in 21 games, the writing has to be on the wall if we lose against Liverpool and Villa. We also had Charlie as well, who says he's feeling very mixed. The boys played their hearts out and our performance did provide me with some reasons to be optimistic. However, 0-2 to 3-2 is unacceptable regardless of the quality of the opposition. Gary's game management is shocking and his comments, as we've alluded to, are seriously worrying as well. Ollie says, really frustrating to concede to such a wonder strike last second, but I think it gives us less doubt of going down because we're performing against a top side who are in form. Did we perform against them? Um, yeah, that's what's difficult, isn't it? I, I don't think we did perform. We got our bodies in the way of stuff yeah. and they couldn't score. But we didn't perform, did we? They had 30 shots. <laughs> you know, with all the stats we've gone over. Um, I think that, that's, that's my concern. I mean, Everton just got slapped up by Arsenal 4-0. Yeah. But in the other game, they won it. Do you know what I mean? And Southampton have got something off Arsenal this season. That's my concern. So we're not many... getting we're not getting anything out of it. But but yeah, as you say, we we if if you're trying to find positives, you've got to look at we took them to the wire. Mm. I know the stats are horrific, but if you want to try and take something, we did take Arsenal to the last kick of the game. So Ivan is glass half full. The, the team did great. The boys gave it their all and left everything out there. That being said, I can't we can't believe we lost another two goal lead. Also, Keith Dibden as well. He questions the management experience and says that an experienced gaffer would have held their nerve and given the lads the encouragement and belief that they so sorely need at two 0 and, you know, it, 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 it's so easy to say these of things course. in hindsight. Um, Ashley says, my feeling is that this is not anything like the losses to Leeds and Spurs. We were away to top of the league. We also had injuries and a lack of depth on the bench. I think Pollock was on there, wasn't he? So And two mm. keepers as well. In order to keep up the energy levels, if he hadn't have made changes and we lost, then everyone would blame the lack of changes. All these opinions are very much hindsight things, aren't they? Richard yeah. Jackson says we're a club with a rookie manager in our first season back at the top level. This season was always going to be tough and we were inevitably going to be found out in lots of areas and we have been. However, we do keep improving game by game and despite Saturday, I remain optimistic. So look, there are some winnable games. Well, we're, put, we're playing teams outside the top six so maybe you know that would be conducive to a more positive like four at the back, more attacking flair perhaps yeah, and less soaking up yeah I don't think we'll, we'll continue with a five for the remainder of the season I do think no, we'll probably will against Liverpool I think it will be a, a tactic against the the top teams on paper um, but yeah I, I agree it's 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 tough to remain optimistic but I'm remaining the only reason I've got that little bit of hope is not really mainly still for sales I mean we can cause these problems on the break we've shown that it's more to do with I think there's some poor teams in this league yeah. and the fact that we've just lost these last two which we were concerned about because it was top two teams in the league we're still well in it because other teams can't get any sort of run going because I think Southampton are poor Leeds are poor even with the, with the Deutsch factor Everton ain't that good and West Ham look awful so Forest have dipped again so that you know you've only got to get above three of them so you never know but um, yeah we have just we've just got we have got to be braver because you know people alluded to it there I was just having a look actually since obviously you got the job after the World Cup and that's that's the main concern is 12 games he's had now, two in a cup, obviously 10 in the league. One win, two draws, nine defeats, scored eight, laying 24. Mm. It's, that is, because it was, I'm going to, I looked at that for the um, tweet that said, you know, other managers get sat for less. And, and you can't argue with it because them stats are absolutely horrific. Yeah. They're horrific. And you just think, surely they're going to improve. Mm. Surely there's going to be a call. I thought we turned it at Wolves. And I don't want to get carried away about our uh, we didn't kick on from Wolves because the fixtures after Wolves were horrific. Yeah. They were really bad on paper, so that Wolves win was even more important. But we've got games coming up. I, I believe Liverpool it starts that, and we've got winnable games. But then, happens. you know, performance-wise, there were elements within Man City, there were elements within Arsenal that that should give us a bit of optimism. Yeah, for sure, um, for sure. I'm, my my worry is always we'll see what happens, but my worry is that 
people will always seem to say the same things of, yeah, but if we perform against a lot of that against teams around us, yeah, but we don't really, and then teams are not going to allow us to break like that. Mm. They, of course they won't because they're going to be deeper than Arsenal and City. So, you know, it's going to be harder to use a counter-attacking tactic against teams that do that. When, as we kind of alluded to earlier in the show, when we've had more of the ball um, in games and had chances, it was Palace home and Southampton home where they had a low block and we didn't score any of us. So the games are all going to be very, very different. And my fear is that we're not going to be able to counter on teams in and around us, as I say, because of the low block. Have we got enough to open these teams up when we've got the ball? I'm not so sure, but we'll see. And Stu says, says to, to defend Gary O'Neill here, we're not going to dominate possession against top sides and the game plan is not to sit back and hit them on the break. He's trying to be fast in transition, which can be anywhere on the pitch. And that's where our strengths are with the new players. So look, I mean... Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's a real difficult one to you know, sum up how we're feeling. And I think, I think we'll leave the tweets there. Obviously, keep on giving us your opinions in the YouTube comments if you're watching on YouTube. Because I think, I think it's one where we now just need to see the good bits from these games against the big sides... Mm. displayed against Leicester, against Villa, against the beatable teams. And then maybe, maybe we might give ourselves a chance of staying up. Certainly, if we don't perform in those games, we are doomed. And I think Gary O'Neill's tenure as AFC Bournemouth manager is, is probably doomed as well. But Yeah, he's got to stay up in my opinion. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll, um, yeah, we'll see if we can get some of the players. It didn't sound like Lerma in particular, but Trail Warriors, it didn't sound like they were long term. So hopefully mm. they'll be back and we'll have some more options going into to the Liverpool game. But yeah, I think you've got, uh, as you say, you've got to get points to the teams around us that are coming and we've got all these winnable games coming up. But equally, as I mentioned earlier, mate, every other team's got something off the off the big boys. So why can't we? Let's, let's, let's go and get something on Saturday. We've, for me, I wouldn't take a draw on Saturday. No yeah. chance would I take a draw. We're not in a position to take a draw at home to Liverpool. Yeah. You know, we're playing, the, we're playing the name too much. We've done this at Chelsea. Oh, it's Chelsea. They're rubbish. But, you know, <laughs> but if we look at the league table, I mean, we've seen it earlier on in the show, but we'll put it back on screen now. Um, if we stay in touch after these three games, that, that's a good position to be in. It is. It is. And I get, I get what people are saying, that we're in touch with winnable games. Yeah, but these winnable games, we keep losing. These winnable games are West Ham, the Leeds, the South Island. We sure, lost them. But surely you've seen enough against these sides to you know, like show that we can do something. Previously, yeah. yes, we were crap. Yeah, but, but we but we are showing signs now. We are, of course, we are against the better teams. But all I've said is when we played these teams before, we lost and we were rubbish. I don't know what we're going to be like again with these new players. I don't know. I hope that that we we play well and we get the points. Of course, I do. But. I, I, I worry that everyone's going, yeah, but don't worry about these games because we'll, we just win them six pointers. Well, so, look, we've got Villa after Liverpool. Is, it, is that a game where you're really expecting us to be, okay, now, now let's demonstrate this, or is that, is that not the opportunity to demonstrate it? I think we've got more chance of beating Liverpool at home than we have Villa away. <laughs> okay, so in April then, Fulham at home. Surely we've got to be demonstrating something against them. But you just done it there, what a lot of people are, are doing is Liverpool, well, you know, it's Liverpool. We've got to be beating Fulham at home. Fulham are, are, are arguably better than Liverpool this season. So do you think <laughs> if, you know, like if I'm... Why are we playing the name again? If as a support, you know, if I'm doing that as a supporter, I mean, I know that Gary O'Neill's obviously, with his management experience, he's um, he's going to be saying that, you know, it's, it's just 11 against 11 in any game. And he, and he, so... Do you think that mentality is like filtering into the squad, into the players then, that, oh God, we're playing bit. the name, not the team? Uh, maybe a little bit. Um, because, so that, I mean, that Chelsea performance, you know, given how yeah. dire they are. Yeah, that was, that was horrific. Um, yeah, I, I, I just, it, it does, it does not. And Liverpool are a bloody good side and it's going to be very, very difficult to get, get anything out of the game. I'm not saying it's not. But what, what I'm saying is they have lost games very comfortably this season, this year, to teams that people are going... Well, that's six points. Yeah, but when we play them, we'll be fine. Well, they could get some off Liverpool. Yeah. Why can't we at home? Yeah. Liverpool, as I said, I think away from home, only have a few more points than us. And we're rubbish away. Yeah. And they've only got a few more than us. We've got to be looking at these home games in particular of getting stuff. I, I, definitely. I think Liverpool home, Fulham home, Brighton home, another difficult. But people will say Fulham home, Brighton at home. We've got to be getting some points there. But then are ruling out Liverpool. Brighton and Fulham have been just as good as Liverpool this season. Just as good. They're all they're all together in the league. So, yeah. But I, I don't I don't believe. I don't believe. And I've I've got I've got a horrible feeling the atmosphere is going to be shite on Saturday. 
and that's you know the, the, that's the last thing that? we want. It's a lunchtime kickoff. Oh, yes, like it's against yeah. Liverpool, a game that's it's you know a team a game, that's yeah. just won seven nil. I don't, you know, and it's just you know because us supporters have got the same mentality. No, I don't. I don't agree. I don't agree. I think no, no, I don't agree. I think sometimes I think we're we're like really really quiet against the big sides. Maybe I I thought we got behind them against City and we lost four one. And I, I thought we were better, and I thought we we helped. I think, um, oh yeah, the the early kickoffs are absolute. I hate that. I've just, re- <laughs> I've just, re- you've just reminded me that I'm going to struggle to get many drinks in. I know this game, but um, I, I think we've got to go into this game, try to win it, and play front foot and causing problems because when teams have done that, they've got stuff off Liverpool this season. But we haven't got City to play. We haven't got Arsenal to play. They are the two that are the best two in this league by by a country mile. This season. It's all upward from here. Yeah, it's got to be, mate. So um, when you look at the amount of wins that we need, what five? When you say that, I'm just being honest. When you say we got, I don't see how we're going to win five football matches. It doesn't sound it's so bad, does it? Fulham, Brighton, Leicester, West Ham, Saints, Leeds. We could do it in. Like in April, we could do it. You know, all them, you just Nate listed a number of teams. Yeah. Only one of them would beat this season. I know, but it's just... Ryan Christie winner. Thanks, Leicester. Mm. Um, look, let's see what happens. I don't want to be too damn big because we didn't... The last what their bollocks off on Saturday and we were so, so close. But it's reoccurring themes that, that are worrying me um, and that it's that... What that would have taken out of the last to throw away another two-goal lead. But, yeah, we haven't... Let's see. Let's see what... I, I hope I go... Tell you what, everyone was right because the games that we expect to lose, yeah, we lost, but we won the games yeah, yeah. that we once that run was gone, we won them. And I'll go get in there. Everyone was everyone was right. Yeah. I, I, you know, let, let's see, let's see what happens. But you know, I'm looking at what's what's the what's the remainder of remainder of March then? It's Liverpool, yeah, Liverpool and Villa. Yeah. So for for me, we've got minimum two for me, yeah. minimum. I, th- I think we've got to be getting at least we've got to win one of them games at least. Yeah. For me, um, oh my god! And I look at yeah, and I look at yes, yeah, so, but I don't want to be put this way. I don't want to be going into imagine them last two United and then Everton away at Goodison, trying to get something. It's going to be difficult. Um, yeah, who knows? But as you said, and as a lot of people are saying, we've we've done all right. We've shown bits against the top two teams in the division. So let's let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. And these games that I keep saying that we haven't won, we've got we've got different players now from January. We spent a lot of money. Let's see if they can perform when we really need them to. Congratulations, Arsenal. Congratulations. <laughs> he done it again! Yeah. Uh, you know what? Um, oh, I'm pl- you know, put aside my own loyalties, I'm, I'm, I'm quite pleased for Arsenal fans that have been suffering for so <laughs> long. I just, I, just, I just wish it wasn't against us, but I do feel that's probably the, um, you know, the match that swings it in their favour. I, you know... I'm sure it's a pivotal one. They'll look back at it mm. as being pivotal. Yeah. For Bournemouth, it could equally be pivotable. Pivotable, pivotal, but then it could be that shock to the system that maybe will cause a reaction at home against Liverpool at uh, the weekend. If you're an Arsenal fan and you've been watching this and enjoyed it, give us a thumbs up. Also stay tuned because there's a second look. No, it's not. What's it? An away day, day an away day show where um, we'll be reviewing your um, way to experience so we'll look forward to that and uh, then later on in the week we'll be looking forward to Liverpool can't wait for that thank you very much whether you've been watching or listening Tom it's been a pleasure thank you mate and uh, we'll see you next time not the cherries not the chess <laughs> <laughs> well, let's not talk about the last minute defeat ever again no